they were sort of navigating towards the top surface. And he thought it as a bad thing. And I was like, no, this is awesome. This is great. Welcome to Nano Matters, the podcast that explores examples of nanotechnology. I'm Lisa Friedersdorf, Director of the National Nanotechnology Coordination Office. Here with me today is Tequila Harris, Associate Professor in the George W. Woodruff School of Mechanical Engineering at Georgia Tech. Her lab studies the behavior of fluids in the manufacturing of polymer thin films for a range of applications, including water filtration and purification. So Tequila, what are some of the challenges associated with water purification? So water purification and or filtration can be very complex in its nature. You have a lot of different constituents that could be living or floating or swimming in in your water source. With the cleaning of these materials from the water, some of them are going to react positively and or negatively with your actual device that's doing the cleaning. And if you get too much buildup, then the pressure increases. And if the pressure increases, the amount of energy that's required to actually filter the water goes up. And so it becomes an astronomical problem, especially in arid places. How does manufacturing thin films relate to water filtration? Within the construct of a water filtration device, you have these things called membranes and they come in different shapes and they come in different variety actually some of them are rigid some of them are flexible in my group we focus on the flexible types membranes that are made more so of polymeric materials not so much ceramic so for us whenever we're manufacturing we make these flexible membrane materials which can later be rolled up How does nanotechnology play a role? With nanotechnology, we think about biofouling, and that's when you have the accumulation of various things onto your on your surface, viruses, bacteria, and things of that nature. Within our group, we collaborate heavily with professors at the University of Kentucky. We collaborated with a professor at the University of Rhode Island, in addition to some international groups in Morocco and Jordan. And what we were looking at is imbibing the polymer material or doping the polymer material with silver nanoparticles, as well as some other types of particles, for example, rosemary. And what that would do is prevent the viruses and bacteria from adhering in the first place, which allows it to slough off. As long as it doesn't stick, then you don't get that buildup. So nanotechnology is playing a key role, a critical role in helping to bring down the cost factor for water filtration in various areas. So you mentioned that you're using silver nanoparticles for their antimicrobial or anti-following properties. And I I know that they're also used in in food contact materials as well. Yes, actually, they are used in so many different ways. In current day, like we're dealing with the coronavirus, COVID-19, and they're actually used in masks. There are some companies that are embedding silver nanoparticles into them for their antiviral properties. And then there are other entities that are using them for their conductive properties. So silver is a very nice commodity and a nice material. And at the nanoscale, it's very powerful. Can you talk a little bit about some of the discoveries that your group has made that would improve water filtration? So one of the discoveries that we have made, it was kind of exciting because it started with an undergrad who was working on the project and he just kind of noticed that the nanoparticles that we were processing, instead of them being fully dispersed through the membrane itself, they were sort of navigating towards the top surface. And he thought it as a bad thing. And I was like, no, this is awesome. This is great. So we um, we figured out that we could actually bias these nanoparticles in pretty significant quantities 
such that we can use less of them and we can push them towards the surface, which is where they're needed in order to get the benefit from them, i.e. the anti-fouling behavior. Wow, that's a very exciting find to see that it's not evenly distributed, but migrates to the the surface where you actually need it. How do you think this discovery or this technology is going to impact the world? We hope that companies will actually commercialize it. One of the other challenges, I didn't mention this one, about water filtration, desalination, cleaning, purification, is that it's an old technology. And it's very, very difficult to get people to change whenever you have something that works and you know it works. So these types of materials are not necessarily commercially available. And it's multifaceted. It's one, can we really trust these materials? And then two, with the nanoparticles, you run the risk of leaching, which is essentially the particle falling off of the polymer matrix. And so right now we, we're hoping, and actually my collaborator at the University of Kentucky, she's been able to invent a methodology by which she can adhere the nanoparticles to the polymer in solution and has brought down the leaching tenfold. So with the combination of her material development and our processing, we're hoping that maybe in the next 10 years, it could be something that's valuable and it is something that's commercialized. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Do you have any closing thoughts that you would like to share with our listeners? I guess the big thing would be Regardless of what the devices are or what the applications are, there's a lot that goes into making them. It's not just a materials problem, but it's materials, it's manufacturing, it's policy, it's chemistry. And so you can look at it as a broad picture, but each piece plays a critical role. And sometimes we have to develop new manufacturing processes because of the actual material that is being developed and that's needed. And in my group, we, we've done that as well. And actually we're, we're working on a new way to create some new materials that are emerging based on this. And so I would just say that whenever you see something Regardless of what it is, it had to be made. And then in order to make it, it had to be understood more fundamentally. And it took a lot to actually get it from point A to your hands. 